morning everybody we're back out this morning it's uh october the 12th and you know, i was just driving by here and uh i was driving along i noticed uh two bald eagles and three or four ravens out flying around out here i come out to take a look and when i got right to here a uh, coyote took off out of over there too. Um, walked over, checked things out, never did find anything dead, but usually you see an eagle and ravens at the same time. And especially with the coyote too, that means there's something dead there, but did find another beaver house. Now I just gotta go back to the truck and check the map and see if this is a property that I have permission to trap on. So. I will, uh, I don't know if I'll trap, if it is a property I can trap, I'll either drop traps in there on the way back out this afternoon, or I'll wait for opening of uh, coyote season in a few days. I'll drop a, a dirt hole set in there too. So, anyways, let's get going. Let's check some traps. You can see here... Uh, up for a good day of trap and I got the quad I got the trailer out today too because I'm hopefully gonna catch more beavers than I can carry on the uh, quad by itself and I got the canoe to go and uh, set that house on the big lake going this down a little farther so we'll see you down there we're just up the road there yeah, that property with that beaver house is uh, one I can trap. But here's uh, one of the spots where I'm going to be having a funnel set in a few days. And uh, you can see we've got a little bit of an ice over. But the good thing about this is, as you can see, the line of bubbles. How many bubbles there are going out in all directions coming out of this culvert. So that's a good sign for number of rats that are swimming through here. So, yeehaw. This side here is not quite froze up, which is good because I don't need it froze up. Alrighty. guys, here we are over at that uh, little pond where we're going to skin the beavers if we actually catch any. But it's going to be some cool skinning. Holy moly, look at straight across here. Well, you probably can't see it without a zoom, but there is a trail coming down behind that house. Traps over there, I guess, but oh well. Anyways, we'll uh, get down here and see if we have anything in these... Uh, traps and like I said the, the bad thing is it's uh, zero degrees right on right on the freezing mark so it's gonna be cool skinning alrighty trailers working good come up that hill like nothing so we'll see down there We're at the uh, second trap on that little pond. The first one wasn't touched again like last time. This is the one that was sprung. Got ourselves a big beaver. So we will 
get them out of the trap. I'll uh, drag them over to here and then go reset this one. Check them with the two and start skinning, I guess. Alrighty. And just a second ago, there was about 15 shots went off. A bunch of goose hunters up over the hill that way somewhere. So, anyways, we'll get this in reset and on our way. Nice, here's trap number three. Beaver number two. But you see what I mean about these? This one here is not even in one of the new traps and he just didn't even you know, twirled around a couple times and uh, didn't even pull a chain tight he got the ghost but he's a pretty good catch just a medium sized beaver medium by medium I generally mean large mediums and large well medium's a small one if it goes on the On the board on the medium size, I would just call that a, a small beaver. Large, mediums, larges, you know, any an extra large or just your average beavers. And then you have your double X, triple X, and bigger, which are your big ass beavers. So I'll just take him out in a sec. I'll go over here to this last set on this pond. You can see here I marked, see the ribbon there, the ribbon over there, because there's six million freaking trails on this pond. And Search around for which one has my traps on it. I'm pretty sure I see a beaver tail sticking out of the water right there. Hi, upper. Drag him down here and skin him. So that when the coyotes find them, they'll have carcasses all over and they'll be able to, uh, be able to run around on the trails looking. So, alrighty. Well, I guess I should take him out of the water. If you have a peek at him. This guy really wound himself up. And it's one of the new traps. <laughs> and he really gave up the fight. So we got. Set right here and uh, start skinning. Okay, so here's number one skinned. Um, you know, if you're gonna do this type thing, you know, move back away from your set, your beaver set, because obviously, you know, I know that's common sense, and but little things sometimes people forget. You want to move back far enough so that the dead beaver doesn't spook any beavers that are trying to come and get caught in your trap. Anyways, I'll go over and I'll skin the next one, reset the trap, and then skin the third one. And, uh, like I said, I mean, it might take a little while for coyotes to find this, but as soon as the birds find it, 
I'm sure the coyotes will be in there too because ravens and magpies are one thing that wolves and coyotes and foxes watch for because the birds are usually the first thing that find the uh, the dead critter so anyways we'll uh, get out here maybe we'll put the head camera on when I skin the next beaver guys got a we're over at this next house here the one trap was sprung with a belial with nothing in it which is odd not a stick not a nothing and uh, this one here's got a, another two-year-old another large extra large type beaver so we'll get this thing reset right in this trail here and head down oh and the two traps right over this hill both were not sprung I'm gonna drop another one in when I uh, get back there and you know I know I showed you that one house right where I park here, right on the road. Now I've checked the traps twice too. There's the most perfect trails you want to see. Um, but there is not been a, there hasn't been sprung, hasn't been nothing. And uh, so I'm guessing somebody went in there last week and just cleaned it out, probably shot them all when they uh, blew that dam out or something. But anyways, we'll get this guy out of here and move on down. Hey guys, so here we're at the last two traps of the first stop. Um, you can see down in there, see the trap, there's a beaver sticking in there. So we'll come get him out as soon as I uh, check this trap over here. Oh, there's a beaver in here too. So that is six beavers for the first stop. All right, I'll get these things reset and head on down the road. Lots more traps to check. Okay, so we're over at trap spot number two. There it is. This is trap number two. There's one up on top of there. I was just sprung. It's a. It was like one of the uh, not new traps, the older style, and uh, probably was a rat that got out. But here we got another two-year-old beaver. So we'll get this thing reset, and I'm changing that one over there since rat season opened up day after tomorrow, and uh, I will change that one to something that will catch a rat if it goes through. Alrighty. Hey guys, we're over at, uh, I think if you remember from last year, the place we called the, the Elk Dam, or the Elk Crossing Dam. It looks like we had a, a bit of a beaver dam break somewhere upstream. You can see here, the, just recently, all this has been washed down. You see all this floating, uh, pond weed. It's usually all over this pond. It's all cleaned right up and all pushed out over the dam and it's changed this whole dam from last year. Remember it had a set right over there and one right on the trail here. Anyways, I just dropped the set in right there. That other trail is gone now. It's just covered in the logs with nothing crossing on it. And then I put one on that dam down below. And uh, next time I come, I'll bring a second one because there's a second fairly good trail there. And lots of elk crossing on the. Show you right up here the uh, how well packed. And you can see the force of this flood that came through here. Ripped this right out and broke it in half. Like more than just elk across in here too, well the deer also but that was a pretty good trail up through here. I'm gonna drop I put a beaver carcass in here and I'm gonna throw another one in too. So we can get some uh, 
coyote snares in here later. Alrighty. Okay, I'm up here above uh, upstream from the Elk Crossing Dam. Got a couple more sets in here. Went up right around the corner on another dam. But I found the, uh, remember I mentioned a pond must have let go. And this is her. I was here a week ago scouting and this was full of water. You can see a feed bed there. But she's pretty drained now. Looks like they've got it maybe, maybe partly plugged, but we'll go see if there's a spot to set. If not, we'll get them on these next, these two dams up here. So, yeah, some, well, not really finished setting for the day, but we got two traps left with me, and I'm pretty sure they're going to be up here. This, this here little slough pond, which was almost dry last year. Yeah. Muskrat feeding right there. I'm not sure you can see him shaking this bad. There's a muskrat house. sitting right there. <laughs> hey, a whole bunch of steaks sitting right there. But we'll carry on. Hey guys, well here's a uh, last two beaver traps in this area. I mean only had one, two, four traps that I checked back here. I said a bunch more but Remember this is that pond I trapped out last year where I kept getting lots of muskrats. But this is something I haven't seen ever in these new traps and that's two traps this close together with nothing in them but a stick. That just don't happen to uh well obviously I've never had it happen yet, but anyways. But we'll get a reset. Keep going. A long way to get back to the truck and no traps in between here and there. And, uh, and then we'll get some more traps on the highway.